This thing, this is what built America. It's the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. It's this thin, yet these rules, which put limits on government, created the most prosperous and successful country in the history of the world. But after the founders gave us this, someone said, we need some more rules. And now we did need some. This wasn't perfect. This allowed for slavery. The founders never thought about pollution control. So it's good that some rules were added and changed. But 164,000 of them? That's how many had accumulated by the time President Obama took office. So the president said this. I believe a thriving private sector is the lifeblood of our economy. I think there are outdated regulations that need to be changed. There is red tape that needs to be cut. There you go. Yeah. Yes, it's true, and everybody loves that. But then, what did the president actually do? He cut a couple of regulations. Now, salmon no longer are regulated by different bureaucracies, depending whether they're caught in salt or fresh water. Good. But then he and his bureaucrats added 10,000 new pages, new rules. Now we're stuck. Here are some of them. This is just as the amount that the president added. Now we have 178,000 pages of rules, rules all of us must obey. And not just 178,000 pages. State and local governments add even more. And that's okay, says radio host Chris Hahn. We all benefit greatly from regulation. But economist Ed Stringham says Hahn doesn't get it. What doesn't he get? The cost of these regulations are just out of control. They're written by administrative bodies. They don't so have what? to They're go by. They're all well-intended. They're making us safer. I just read the best book is War and Peace. The number of pages associated with the Dodd-Frank Act is 25 times longer than this. Right. So Mr. Dodd or Mr. Frank never read this book. He never well, read their you know, entire book. I, I got to tell you, it was the worst of times that led to Dodd-Frank. So you should understand that. And we needed to do something about what was going on but there. But is that, is that a useful thing? 25 times that many pages? Well, is that going to make us better off? Well, when you're talking about the financial services industry and their armies of lawyers, I would think that Dodd-Frank, quite frankly, might not be long enough. Do you know even Bernanke could not refinance his home? That says a lot. Well, Bernanke, Bernanke can't Bernanke refinance Bernanke had a home. very big home and he was working on a government salary, so I think it was okay. Chris, you worked five years for Senator Chuck Schumer. Almost six. Like Senator, almost six. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting booed by people who waited in line for tickets and got to see me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, he's an unusual case. He holds a press conference just about every weekend because he figures he gets more airtime that way on the weekend. Yes. And he proposes banning something. He's proposed banning bitcoins, energy drinks, assault weapons, high-frequency stock trading, caffeine sprays and powders, powdered alcohol, green laser pointers, because somebody pointed at an airplane. You worked for this guy. I love him. He was one of the best senators. He still is one of the best senators this country has, and New York is lucky to have him. <laughs> He's the reason people suffer from lack of innovation. That he and ab you. Absolutely not true. Why should bitcoins be banned? I don't know. I didn't read the press release. <laughs> It's the idea that if you don't understand something, the government needs to prevent it. How about laser pointers? I don't know. Don't point them at planes. <laughs> Our likely next president, Hillary, is a big fan of regulation. When Philadelphia's mayor proposed a new tax on soda, Ms. Clinton was quick to praise it. I'm very supportive of the mayor's proposal to tax soda. Should we tax soda? No. But why not? People are fat. <laughs> well, isn't there a cost to people overusing soda? The most bloated organization out there, you want managing our <laughs> diet. Joke, they've, got got, <laughs> they've got terrible advice about, oh, don't eat fat, have carbs, go for high carbs now. Oh, let's switch back. Don't eat butter, have margarine. Oh, let's switch I, back. I think it's not scientific. I They're, think health decisions should be left between a doctor and a patient, but that said, there are things that we know are going to make you fat. We do know that if you drink five sugary sodas a day, you're more likely to be fat than if you drink five waters a day. So maybe there should be some Some people cost know that. that. Why can't they make their own decisions? Well, I, they can make their own decisions, but why do I have to pay for their bad choices? This is a big argument from the banners, that because we have socialized medicine and we're paying for other people's health care, we have a right to control what they eat.
Right. Once you get government involved with these, any of these decisions, it's like, oh, well, now we need to do that. Now we need to do that. Now we need to do that. It's like, okay, yeah, let's just restrict everything we do. Let's have them decide what we're eating for breakfast, for lunch, what time we go to bed. Let's tax people who stay up late. Let's tax all Look, of our yeah. bad you're activities. All, you're, you're, you're all... <laughs> it's not just the Democratic nominee who wants to regulate. Here's a rule proposed by Donald Trump. I would certainly start taxing goods that come in from China. People like this. This has helped him become popular among Republicans. You both agree that this is nuts. Terrible, 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 terrible. It's bad for consumers. It's also bad for American manufacturers. Look at Ford. Well, well that's company. counterintuitive. People well, think keep this stuff out, then American manufacturers will blossom. It's bad for everybody. It's a trade war. Ford designs cars here but up to 33% of the components of a Ford Mustang are imported. We already saw General Motors, Chrysler hobbled by unions. We want to hobble them with these additional tariffs. This is a proposal that would make Toyota great again. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that every economist, even the most left-wing friend I've ever met, uh, and I can agree Is your on. friend now? Oh. Hey, come on. <laughs> I didn't we say disagree, it. but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> on social media, I ask you for examples of stupid rules. Joe Love posted ethanol in gasoline. Yeah, mandating that's stupid. Donna Cox said the war against drugs. I agree with both of them. Someone named Rick tweeted, you can't pump your own gas in <laughs> Oregon. In New Jersey also. So what's that about? It, it, that's one of the best things about New Jersey is I don't have to pump my own gas. The prices are low. <laughs> no. And I don't have to pump it. No. <laughs> this is it's crazy. cheaper because the tax is three cents in New Jersey and 40 cents in New York. Or something. Right. And I don't have to pump it there. It would cost 10 cents less if you could pump it. But this is what galls me about you left wingers, this, the way you use the word have. I'm a moderate. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to pump your own gas. Well, you never have to. You can always go to a full service station. But what about people who want to? What about voluntary versus forced? Well, you know, that's a, a state regulation. The people of New Jersey elect representatives. If they don't like it, they should elect people who are going to change that law. It's not a really hard law the legislators to are taking money from the service station lobby. Or from somebody. the tough, from the guy who pumps the gas. You think he's got his own lobby? Yeah. You think the guy pumping the gas is so powerful that he can Somebody had a, a lobby that these two states are the only ones where it's not allowed. The original argument was that we would, were so stupid, we blow ourselves up. But somehow in the 48 other states, they don't. And these two st states hang on to it. Well, that's up to the states. In a free market, you have two pumps, the full service, the self-service, and the free market has outcompeted the old way of doing things. And that's the only way those I, people can be I believe business. in America where everybody should f feel free to have gas smelly hands <laughs> all day long, whether they want to or not. No, you don't. You <laughs> say you're fine with New Jersey. I'm fine saying with you're it. forbidden to have uh, gas on your hands. I, like I said, if I lived in New Jersey and I had a problem with it, I would change that law. Think about that. He would have to change the law. He would have to get 51% of the people to vote for something. In a free market, all of us can have what we want. Isn't that better?